sifting through fragments of a difficult history. This archaeological team is pouring over dirt from the bowels of an old church. It was next door to a residential school that existed here for almost 80 years. So these are called shaker screens. The Pine Creek First Nation hired forensic anthropologist Emily Holland and her crew from Brandon University to conduct this project. One thing about doing this work in any kind of archaeological context is to be thorough and systematic, right? So by the time you're done, you can say, you looked at everything that was in here. They're among the first in Canada to dig at the site of a former residential school. What they find could have profound implications for other First Nations considering their own excavations. Tell me where it is we're going and what's down there. Well, right now we're going to go into the basement of Our Lady of Seven Sorrows Church in Pine Creek First Nation. And they have identified 14 different GPR reflections in here, and we're in the process of excavating them. Please go ahead, watch the first step. We've been given special access to the basement turned excavation site. Survivors told stories of horrors here, of bodies buried. Over the past month, the team has dug 14 holes. So there are 14 reflections identified in this basement. And when we were making the plans for doing this work, we had to plan as though we were going to find 14 graves with 14 people. Last year, Pine Creek was one of many First Nations across Canada to conduct a ground penetrating radar survey or GPR. They hired a company with drones and other equipment to scan the ground near the church and under it. In the basement, they detected 14 what are called reflections or anomalies. In the surrounding fields, there were dozens more. There's 31 out here. It starts, there's a few here, and then they're up all in the oh, way yeah, over there yeah. in the fields. Brenda Catchaway is a third generation survivor of the school. She's helped organize the searches. She remembers the anxiety and anger here after the initial findings. There were some community members that wanted to just go ahead and go in the church basement and start digging themselves. And, you know, we told them, well, you can't do that. It's got to be done by experts. It's got to be like, what if we damage any findings that we come upon if it's human remains? And I sense the urgency that we needed to find out for sure if those anomalies were human remains. Taking that step of actually deciding to dig, of trying to confirm what those anomalies are, led down a tough road. Many in the community wanted to leave the past in the past. Then there were other First Nations that had to be consulted because their children also attended the school here. We began with community engagements after the 215 announced in Kamloops. Our elders right away said, we have a history here that needs to be told, that needs to be shared. People need to know the truth. Chief Derek Nipanak is the son of a survivor, a grandson and a great grandson of a survivor. The limbs of his family tree are weighed down by hard memories of this school. This huge decision was left for him to steer. But this has been very, very difficult for me as a, as a, a boy from this community, you know. It's, been, it's not been easy. And um, what makes it even more difficult is that because my heart is exposed to the process, I'm vulnerable. I'm vulnerable to the criticisms of those who do not want to go this way. There were different perspectives about this issue during your consultations. And not, not everyone necessarily agreed with excavating. How did you deal with that? It must well, have been tricky. It, it was it was tricky. Um, it was it was difficult. There's people who would rather have you know left things alone completely. Uh, at the same time, I, I think the vocal majority in the room in the community engagements wanted certainty. They wanted to find the truth. 
um, they wanted people held accountable. And, and to that end, you know, we prioritized that, uh, that voice. On top of those divisions were questions about the reliability of the technology that led them to dig. Would the GPR survey lead to the discovery of human remains? Or would the excavation come up empty? And what would that mean? And then I'll give you a point at 15. Our crew watched as they completed their search in the basement. The next morning, the community gathered for a ceremony to learn what they had found. So with 70 plus anomalies, we're left to wonder, are any of those burials of our ancestors? Emotions were close to the surface when Chief Nipak made the announcement. And when they did those 14 digs, they did not find any evidence of human remains underneath the church. So of those 14, zero of those excavations reveal anything looking like human remains. So how do people here feel? Some said the team must have dug in the wrong spots. The chief worried it could affect other First Nations in their search for the truth. But he says the dig was still the right choice. I'm, I'm absolutely okay to be able to say, you know, we did identify reflections there. Those reflections turned out not to be human remains. So I would ask every, every single person out there who is receiving information from communities that are doing, uh, you know, science, they're doing the scientific research to identify these reflections and then putting out numbers. Be very cautious. Uh, don't stop there. Take the next steps you need to, but do not let the ground penetrating radar numbers be the um, conclusive evidence that you need to arrive at, uh, at, 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 a, at, at your healing pathway. In this, you can see there are two giant rocks in the base. So this yeah. is the floor of the reflection. It's completely excavated. For the team from Brandon, the excavation points to an important discovery. The GPR technology did what it's supposed to. It detected differences in the soil. They found old nails, glass, large rocks. This dark layer here. Layers of ash, perhaps debris from a fire decades ago. There's some ceramic. There's a pattern on it. If it's not human remains, what does that mean now? For the context of this work? Or, yes. Um, I think, first of all, we always have to remember that GPR cannot tell us for sure that it's a grave or that it, the reflection contains human remains. It's just beyond the technology. The only way to ever understand what's in a reflection is to excavate. But she stresses, this search was not a clear example of what to expect as other communities continue to investigate. This church basement though is a really unique situation. It's not something where I think you can draw direct parallels between the work here or even the reflections that have been identified outside of the church. And certainly you can't draw direct parallels to any other uh, work that's going on in, in these kinds of investigations in Canada. With the results disclosed, the community was welcomed into the basement to see the work for the first time. Inside, tears from some survivors, but mixed with other sentiments. How do you feel that there's been no human remains found? I'm happy that there's no human remains found. And we do have quite a few people that come and say, I wish, I hope they don't find anything, right? Because then, I don't know, it, maybe it's a sense of relief. You know, I've been thinking all this, already this last couple of weeks, I've been thinking about like, how are we going to get this word out so that it doesn't paint us with a negative, a negative picture uh, for people to say, we told you there wouldn't be anything there. Right. But we need, we need it to do it so that a lot of our people can, can begin that process of healing. I feel like, yeah, this is just one phase, 
so we need to still continue. Well, Mish, Brenda's last thoughts there are really nuanced. I mean, relieved not to, to see human remains because it's terrible, but also concerned that, that people will take this moment and say, see, we told you so. We told you there would be nothing there. Can we talk about that? What's the conversation there? So there was some concern in the community about the I told you so's. And we have seen media reports pointing to the results in Pine Creek as an example of some larger problem with investigations across Canada at other sites. The chief said he knows the results of this are now being shared with the world and with other First Nations. And as we heard in our story, he wanted the results not to be considered as a guide, but as a lesson to other First Nations communities. I'd call it Indigenous Ground Penetrating Radar 101. Don't let ground penetrating radar be your sole guide. But we do know the remains of children from residential schools have already been found in the U.S. I visited the Rosebud First Nation in South Dakota, where the remains of six children were repatriated from Pennsylvania. So yes, it was an American residential school, but these were not anomalies or reflections. So, well, Mij, very briefly, if we can, what's your sense about other First Nation communities? What happens now? It's all been pretty quiet, but here in BC, the Williams Lake First Nation bought the land that a local residential school once sat on in their territory, and where dozens of anomalies have also been identified. Now that the property is protected, and they are interested in excavating. Meanwhile, in Pine Creek, there are still more than 57 anomalies outside the church in the field, but the community has not made a decision whether or not they're going to excavate. All right, Wamish Hamilton, thank you for your reporting. Thank you.